Hello, welcome to another Research Methods for the Biosciences screencast for R. This screencast covers section 10.6, Introduction to Parametric ANOVA, including section 10.11, Two-Way Parametric ANOVA with Equal Replicates, section 10.12, Two Keys Test following a Parametric Two-Way ANOVA, and section 10.13, Two-Way Parametric ANOVA with Unequal Replicates. This test asks how two categorical variables, term factors, affect a single dependent variable, often called the response variable, in statistical packages. The null hypothesis states that the factors have no effect and that all samples belong to the same statistical population. So why not do two one-way ANOVAs? Well, apart from the fact that the more data you have in a test, the better the model the program can produce, the two-way ANOVA allows us to ask if there's any interaction between the factors. That is, do the factors have a greater effect when combined than we might expect from simply summing their individual effects? For example, Table 10.14 gives the fresh weight to two varieties of Cosmos atrosanguineus called Pip and Christopher, grown in one of four types of compost, eight weeks post-weaning from a tissue culture environment. The questions we can ask are whether any of the compost promotes superior height growth of the Cosmos variety in general, whether either of these varieties is more successful in making the transition from the tissue culture environment to the greenhouse, as measured by height, and finally, do the two varieties do better on different composts? This last question asks if an interaction occurs between the variety and compost type. The two-way ANOVA test implemented by most programs is reliable with samples that have both equal and unequal replicates, as found with the data in Table 10.19, providing, however, the variances are similar that is, homogeneous. Samples with unequal variances are most likely to occur with samples with unequal replicates. We can test if the variances are homogeneous by doing a version of the F-test, first on the data within the program. See Chapter 10 in the book and Box 10.7 for further details. If you get a significant result from the ANOVA, you may then wish to work out which of the samples are significantly different from each other. Some programs will give you the option of performing these so-called post hoc tests on the effect of individual factors and the interaction. This is the script we are going to be using, and in this case it is split over two screens. You may wish to freeze the screencast to look at it in more detail, and here is the rest of the script. Or alternatively, you can download it from the resource centre. The command functions are in black, are all in lower case and you must enter them exactly as shown. The lines in green are notes to help your understanding of how the script flows. The words in blue are variable names and can be changed to suit your data, but you must be consistent in spelling and the use of lower and upper case letters. And the data are in red. Looking at the first variable you can see that we have used a C operator to load the data into R. In the second variable we have used the rep function. So why use the rep command to create some of the variables? Well, if we were to enter these variables with the C option, the script would look a bit like this. As your data samples get larger, and the analysis you want to do becomes more complicated with more factors, the C operator becomes inconvenient. One option is to load the data in from a separate file, and I go over how to do this in my introduction to our screencast. But if you didn't have access to the file, and you wish to have a go at repeating the analysis in this screencast, entering the values for compost and variety would be very tedious. More importantly, however, a slight spelling mistake in one of the Christophers or the pips would render the results inaccurate. So let's run the script. First, we track up to the beginning of the first line and click to place the cursor at the beginning of the script. You can now run the script line by line by pressing Ctrl R if you're using Windows or Linux, or Command Option R if you're using a Mac. Each time we run a line, it appears in the console window along with any results the command produces. So let's start by defining the variables using the C operator. First, I'm going to define height. As you can see, the variable height contains 80 data points. The little plus sign indicates that I've split the data over several lines, and I must run each line in order to declare this variable. The compost variable 2 requires 80 components, but in order to make us more accurate and save us time, I'm going to use the rep command. here you can see I have the compost types A, B, C and D and the each attribute tells the program that it needs to place these 20 times in the compost variable. This is how the variable now looks. 20 A's followed by 20 B's, 20 C's and 20 D's. The variety variable is a little bit more difficult. In order to create this variable we're going to have to use rep twice. The first use of it creates a variable where Pip and Christopher are repeated four times. As such, 
The first pip and Christopher will belong to compost A, the second to compost B, and so on. However, there are 10 data points related to compost A and pip, and 10 data points related to compost A and Christopher, and so on. I now need to amplify the pips and the Christophers 10 times. I'm going to do that with the second command, where the rep command is given the variable variety, the each attribute tells it to take every variable entry and repeat it 10 times. The result looks like this. This way is far more preferable than entering pip 10 times followed by Christopher 10 times and repeating that another three times for the other three composts. Finally, to test the homogeneity of the variances, we need to produce a variable that contains all the various combinations of compost and variety. Here, you can see I've defined a string that contains AP for compost A and pip, AC for compost A and C, BP for compost B and pip, etc. Each of these combinations appears 10 times. So I'm going to run the command and we get a variable that looks like this. When doing an ANOVA in R, R requires that the categorical variables are declared as factors. So the next three lines are going to turn our variables into factors. We now have compost as a factor, variety as a factor, and CV combinations as a factor. We can now move on to see if the variances are homogeneous or not. In this case, I'm going to run a flinger.test. The focus of the Flinger test is height as divided up according to the compost and variety used. We can see that it has given us a p-value of 0.4093. So what is the meaning of the p-value? A p-value of 1 means we can accept the null hypothesis as true, whereas a p-value of 0 means we can accept the null hypothesis as untrue. As we travel from a p-value of 1 to 0, the transition point between true and untrue is set at 0.05 in the biological sciences. The smaller the p-value below 0.05, the more confident we can be in rejecting the null hypothesis. A p-value of 0.4093 is above our transition probability of 0.05, which means the result is not significant and we cannot reject the null hypothesis that states there is no difference between the variances of our samples. As this is one of the conditions we have to meet, we can now move on to do the two-way ANOVA. To do the ANOVA, I'm going to use the AOV command. The AOV command produces many results, and it can be quite confusing. So I am loading those results into a variable called AOV.output. We can see that the focus of the ANOVA is height, as split up by compost and variety. The little star in the middle of compost and variety tells the program that I also wish to look at the interaction. The summary command is useful as it will take all the results from the AOV test and display the ones that we are really interested in. The probability value for compost is 0.2847, which is above our 0.05 transition value. Thus, this is not a significant result. We cannot reject the null hypothesis, which states that there is no difference in the height of plants grown in different composts. However, for variety, the p-value is extremely small, at 2.42 times 10 to the minus 8. This indicates there is a significant difference between the heights of the two varieties, and that we can reject the null hypothesis that there is no difference in height due to variety. The third line contains the interaction between compost and variety. As we can see, this value is 0.0683, which is above our 0.05 transition value, suggesting there is no interaction between compost and variety. So how would we go about doing some post-hoc tests? In this analysis, there's no need. The only significant result is variety, and there are only two groups. It would be very easy from looking at the data on a graph to know which variety is the tallest. But if it's not so obvious which factors are different from each other, then we can do a two-key test on the output from the ANOVA. Then we can do a two-key test on the output from the ANOVA. We get three tables. The first table tells us which composts are significantly different from each other. We already know from the ANOVA that there isn't a significant difference, and it's quite refreshing to see that all the p-values are above 0.05. If we track down to variety, we can see it's suggesting a p-value of 0. p-value isn't really 0, but R is telling us that this is an extremely low value, confirming that there is a significant difference between the varieties in terms of height. Finally, we get some information about the interaction. You can see from the first column, we have every combination of compost and variety compared with every other compost and variety combination. In the first row, it is comparing Christopher, grown in compost B, with Christopher, grown in compost A. We can see the p-value is equal to 0.094, approximately, a non-significant result. If we scroll down, 
you do find some significant results, such as comparing Pip grown in compost B with Christopher grown in compost B. Of course this is not true, as the anifa has already informed us that there are no significantly different results due to the interaction of compost and variety. I hope you found this screencast helpful. For further information on how to use this test, or the theory behind it, then please consult the book. More information on how to use the program to perform the test can be found in our online web guides located in the Resource Centre. Thank you for listening.